Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. So we meet here again for another chapter on data, uh, not data computation, okay? it's a, for computer architecture and organization. I myself, Dr. Shami Fauzi bin Kamaru Zaman, presenting from University of Malaysia Pahang. So today, okay, we are going to look at into chapter 4, which is assembly language. So in assembly language, okay, we, uh, we usually heard Okay, instead of assembly language, you usually heard about programming language. So, in case you are familiar with programming language, we have uh, like C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Python, okay, recently we have more like R, okay. So, those are the kind of high-level language, what we call here high-level language. So, what exactly an assembly language? So, assembly language is uh, actually uh, what step? Uh, lower than the high level language before the machine language. So previously, okay, uh, in when the first they first developed the computer, so usually the coding of a machine, okay, the programming of a machine usually be conducted through uh, a sheet of uh, a sheet of paper with holes on it, okay, where they have to punch holes so that they can do uh, some kind of programming for the PC. So later on, because of the development of a lot more binaries inside a computer for processing and for storing, so those kind of methods become very, very tedious and very, very difficult and time-consuming, even uh, costly for them to do. So at one point, they decide to simplify the commands being entered into a computer. So they simplify those commands of those binary in form of a readable language, which is what we call as assembly language. So the concept of assembly language and the original machine language is not much different, where the original machine language, they have relation with uh, what kind of instruction, what kind of uh, address that you're going to operate on, what kind of data you're going to operate on, all those kind of thing, okay, instead of in binary, they simplify in assembly language. And <laughs> for some of the machine, uh, for some of the high level languages, okay, they tend to even simplify the assembly language even more so that it becomes a more readable language, like readable equation for you when you, you, you are doing your programming. So, and even some high level language, they bypass the assembly language, they go directly to the machine language. Okay, so no matter which kind of assembly language that you have, uh, which kind of programming language that you use, okay, so assembly language is basically the, the base of those high level language uh, programming methods. Okay, so this one, okay, assembly language, they represent, okay, binary in simple way. Okay, so what kind of binary in simple way okay example of machine language okay so here's what a program fragment looks like so this one is in binary okay this means z equal x plus y so it's difficult for you to understand based on the binary itself so basically okay, assembly and machine language so machine language they are native to processor executed directly by the hardware okay and the instruction consists of binary code 1 and 0 However, assembly language, a programming language that use symbolic names to represent operation, registers, and memory locations. Okay, so this is slightly higher than, uh, slightly higher level languages, but not up until higher level languages. So readability of this instruction is better than you read for machine language. Okay, so one to one correspond, uh, one to one correspondence with machine language instruction. So it's exactly a trans like a direct translation of the machine language into a readable language. Okay, so in terms of you to convert the assembly language to a machine code, you need what we call assembler. Okay, assembler. So assembler is work like, uh, it works like a compiler for high level language. Okay, so high level language, they translate uh, the high level programs to machine code. Okay, so either directly to machine code or sometimes they translate it first into an assembly language through an assembler and later on into a machine code. So for compiler and assembler, so usually if you are familiar with programming language, you might heard about this compiler. Okay, for example, C compiler, okay, and a lot of things, GCC compiler. 
So for high level languages, sometimes the compiler will, will take the languages directly into a machine language and sometimes the compiler will convert it into assembly language first and from assembly language they will convert it into the assembler. So for example, this uh, on the this figure, okay, this is looks uh, the program that I show here. Okay, this one uh, represent a high level language program in C. Okay, so if you're familiar with C, this is a program from C. So through a compiler, C program will compile the C code into a, an assembly language program. Okay, so based on this assembly language program, an assembler will convert it into a binary program. Okay, binary machine language program. So this one, okay, this is what with the computer will run with. Okay. So basically, assembler is a software tools that are needed for editing, assembling, linking, and debugging the assembly language program. Okay, they convert the source code program written in assembly language into object files in machine language. Okay, so popular assembler have emerged over the years for the Intel family of processor that include like for example we have Turbo Assembler and we have Network Assembler and we have New Assembler distributed by the Free Software Foundation. In case you are familiar with open source program, you, you, sh you can look for an open source program online where you have a GNU Assembler available for you do to download into your Linux based machine. So for assembly language, okay, the first things that you need to remember is that it has what we call a mnemonics, okay, mnemonics. So in assembly language, mnemonics are used to specify an opcode that represent a complete operational uh, machine language instruction. So what does it mean by opcode? So opcode is basically a mathematical process. Like for example, addition, subtraction, moving, store, okay, uh, moving something, mathematical or loading process, okay, so multiplication, division, so those kind of instruction, okay, in assembly language, we simplify it, we represent it by what we call mnemonics, okay, in the case of inside the slide, we have MOV. So the mnemonics MOV is used in assembly language for copy and moving the data between register and the memory location. Uh, so this is one example. So other example we have add to add the value of one register to another register. Sub, sub SUB. So this one for you to subtract value from one register to another register. So the mnemonics is what represent instruction. So each command of a program, okay, they are called instruction basically. So it is because it instructs the computer what to do. So computers only deal with the binary data, hence the instruction must be in the binary form, 0 and 1. So the set of all these instructions makes up the computer machine language. So all of this set of instruction, this is what we call instruction set. So basically, what they, uh, what they call a program is a set of instruction. Okay, a set of instruction for the PC to conduct. So inside the instruction fields, okay, they have two parts involved. Okay, two major parts. And there are a lot more parts, but basically two parts that you need to know for now. So the first one is the opcode. Okay, which represent operation, what kind of operation you are telling the computer to do. And then the second one is what we call operands. Operand is what kind of items inside your PC that you want the operation to conduct at. Okay, so like for example, you want to add value in register A to value in register B. An opcode is represent, uh, the opcode of that instruction is addition add and the operands for that uh, that instruction is the memory location of register a and the memory location of register b okay so this specify the operands basically specify where to get the information the items that it needs to operate the instruction 
So basically, it's a source or destination of register. So this is example, okay? So you have at R1, R3, 3, okay? So this one, okay, at R1, R3, 3. So means that R3, you will add with 3, and the answer will be stored in R1, okay? So the opcode here is add. What to do with the data? The operands here, where to get the data and put the result. So the data will get from register 3, and this one is just uh, a value, okay, that you inserted from your keyboard, okay, to be added to register 3, okay, and then the answer will be stored in register 1. So the register 3 items will not be changed. So there are a lot of types of opcodes, and it differs according to the processing maker. Okay, so the processor maker they make their own, uh, they in, make their own system. They make they have their own architecture. They have their own organization, and sometimes they even provide the basic operating op, uh, operating system uh, for the components that they provide. So in this case, they need their own assembler. Okay, for assembling the the <coughs> program for their components. So in this case, the programming language also need to be compliant to the assembly itself. So some of them are common and some of them might be different, different according to the maker itself. So some of the common one is like, for example, add, sub, mult. Okay, sometimes for different maker, they use MPY for multiplication. This one, M-U-L-T, example. Okay, and or this one is a binary instruction. For example, you combine 1 and 1, you got 1 if it's n. Okay? So compare, so CMP. So memory load and store, you have LD or ST or you have load, okay, or you have a store. Okay? Control transfer, GMP. JMP means jump. Okay? So you have BNE. BNE I'm not familiar with. Okay? And then you have, like, for example, complex instruction like MOVS. Okay? This one also I'm not familiar with. So we have... Uh, operands like for example register okay and then you have register uh, and then you have immediate instruction okay like for example you put in from your keyboard and then you have indirects like for example you have to take the value from another location okay and then you have offset you have uh, offset means that you have to change the value in a certain location first and uh, you have a PC relative uh, Control operands. So each operands, okay, they have their own particular addressing mode, okay, for any instruction that you are going to use. So they reflect the processor data path space. So basically, if the processor want to do the instruction, so it, it will create a pathway from the processor to the operand itself, take the data from the operands and process it inside the CPU register itself. So example of assembly and uh, assembly address instruction, okay, assembly language uh, instruction and machine code. Okay, this one is one of the example table from one of the makers online. So you have like for example, move AX1, move AX2. Okay, this one is example of uh, register. Okay, register, register, this one is direct instruction. So you have the from the assembly instruction converted into the machine code. Okay, and then this one is the instruction address, where you can get the instruction from. So when you translate a language, okay, same thing, okay, uh, high-level language translate to assembly language. So for example, in English, you have D is assigned the sum of A times B plus 10, in this case. So higher-level language, they will conduct it in programming, for example, D is equal A times B plus 10 here in equation form. And when you compile it, it goes into assembly language like this. Move E, A, X, A. Okay, and then multiply with B. Okay, so this is a register. Inside the, this register, put A. And then multiply it with B. And then add, okay, 10 to the E, A, X. So in the E, A, X, we have A multiplied with B. And then you add 10 to the EAX, 
and then from that move d e x transfer the, the value from e a x into d okay so this is an assembly language instruction and from this we convert it into a machine language like this so usually okay you can familiar with assembly language okay we are using it based on the ASCII itself so they uh, ASCII is basically okay as we know is a scheme to use for assigning number of values to punctuation marks spaces numbers and other characters so ASCII they use seven bits to represent characters the value from 000 000, 000, 000, 000 to 111 1111 or 00 to 7f okay which are used by giving ASCII the ability to represent 128 different characters okay and an extended version of ASCII assigns character from 80 through ff so we have an extended version as well so this one is what is we are going to use to represent the assembly language here okay ASCII is what we use to represent the assembly language when you convert them into a machine language okay so that's all for our chapter for today so we'll continue again later on for the second part of the chapter so thank you for subscription and liking my videos i hope i can see you again next time in my other videos so stay safe bye bye assalamualaikum